All right. Um, I think what we'll be doing today is I'm just be doing a sketchbook walkthrough. I finished one of these guys a little while ago. Uh, it's a metallic sketchbook. I put stickers on the front. And it's taken me approximately, well, yeah, uh, about eight months to go through one of these, but I've been walking in and out of other books as well. Um, so just kind of go through, share some of the drawings that are in here, and see how it goes. So being left-handed, I do everything upside down and backwards, of course. So I turn my book around. Uh, it's a frog. I like the animals. I think they're um, they have kind of a weird quality about them. Plus, if you make a mistake on them, it doesn't really matter because they're they're animals, so you don't tend to notice uh, mistakes with the uh, the composition of the anatomy. Whereas with you know, if you're drawing humans and stuff, that really stands out. All right, so small sketches, just ideas. I was playing around with the idea of dragons. Um, I always like mushrooms, and I was playing with scales and uh, the scale size of things. There's that one. Uh, sometimes I'll do little small ones and uh, do two on a page. Yeah. It was a, probably a snowy day when that one came around, or wished it was a snowy day. Um, more snow, so it must have been, what's the date? Yeah, February 10th. So we've got um, just some pine cones covered in snow. I did finish this, um, traced it out on ink using a light board, and that's the original, the final drawing somewhere else. So I figured out where that is. Uh, sketch ideas. So I was working up a drawing for a poem that a friend wrote, and these are different ideas of things we we're talking about. I'm talking about perspective there too a little bit. <clears throat> Not much to say about that one. Just skull mushrooms, weird stuff. Uh, playing with the idea of frames and seeing how they work. That one didn't turn out so well. Um, it's a little throwaway there, but yeah, kind of an idea. Uh, so this one I did, just kept it a pencil sketch, and you can kind of see I have a, a light pencil outline. What I ended up doing was tr using transfer paper and transferring it onto a piece of white clayboard, and that was the final there. So you can see the the sketch to the final, kind of side by side with the uh, the work there. Anyway, just playing around with clayboard. Interesting stuff. Oh, I skipped a page somehow. Blank page. Look at that. Oh yeah, so I try to re uh, reincorporate that kind of twisting, curving thing with the perspective, but that one I didn't wasn't too happy with it. It's all kind of janky and wobbly. I went down to Portland. This would have been March, I guess. And I, uh, they are restoring some of the carousel horses. Uh, Portland used to have in Jansen Beach, a uh, very large wooden horse carousel. And so I got to go down there and draw one of them up, uh, just as an invitation thing. So that was the result on that one. I think they're making a coloring book out of it. Uh, hummingbird. Again, so the process was to do the sketch in here. And then the um, the final would be uh, using a light board and uh, going over it with ink, but the sketch is kept there. And some commission work, working on bones and stuff for hands. Uh, so this one is a poem that a friend made, and uh, I did an illustration for it, just for funsies kind of a thing. Uh, kind of keeping in that style, um, trying to play with more things in the foreground, things cutting in and out, just to kind of give more layers as you look back into the piece. Same idea, uh, different motif though, or same motif but different uh, subjects I should say. There's a snail getting a drink. Eh, just little floaters. So on the way out to the coast, um, the Pacific coast, there's all these little um, small islands that have these little tight clusters of trees clumping up on them. 
So I was inspired by that to do this one. So getting back to some more blocky things, kind of like a, a Tetris vibe with this one. I think there's probably a few more of those in here. Yeah, you'll never guess what inspired this one. It was, let's try to reach over here and grab it. This little guy. So, there's that. That was a fun one. Uh, this one I picked up some gray markers and I was able to get some different tones in there. Uh, just kind of playing around with that. And also really fading back that background. Uh, there's things I like about this one, there's things that I don't like about this one. Like I think this turned out okay down here as far as like showing contrast and where the light's coming from. This over here I feel is kind of a mess overall. Anyway. I uh, got some more markers, of course, playing with color on that one and tone. It's a little fern sword or sword fern. I don't know what they're called. There's a little pre opened fern. Bird. So my mom actually got me a book on birds and, um, you know, how to draw them and all that kind of stuff. And the, it really breaks it down quite well. I don't have the book handy with me, otherwise I'd show you. Um, but it uh, kind of deconstructs how bird wings work and how their bodies are constructed to more authentically illustrate them and draw them. Plus they're just kind of weird. So, yeah, still playing with birds and trying to do something weird with them. I think this guy's learning new songs for spring to try to impress his friends. Yeah, that one was a... You can see I didn't like that one. It says nope. That one didn't turn out so good. Just little fillers. More of the same. Not very exciting with the same kind of scene over and over again. So that one, I really like that one. Um, if you can see, but it's it's done almost entirely, I think, with uh, stipple. Really wanted to try to push out something with stipple, and uh, it was a pain in the butt. I don't think stippling's for me. I know a lot of people do it really well, but I don't have the I don't have the patience for it. This took forever. This I like how this turned out down here, but everything else too much work. <laughs> too lazy. Yeah. Again, more floating rocks and trees and cabins and stuff. But not very exciting. I was doing some hand practice. This must have been May. So we're already, I don't know if you can see, but we're about halfway through the book and we just got to May. Everything else from here forward is from May to August. So it's, you see I start using this book more. I think what happened was I had a other sketchbook I was using at the same time and I must have used that one up. But yeah, these are little throwaway things. You know, it's just like, whatever. Not, they don't mean anything. They're just kind of there. This is for a commission I did for a cabin company. I forget where they're based out of. Uh, this one was inspired by Rob Turpin, who is also known as This Northern Boy on Instagram. He's a really cool guy. He's got a lot of neat uh, spaceships and stuff that he draws. And they have these sort of long fins that are really flat and these um, sort of bulbous weird bodies and stuff. So this was kind of an homage to his uh, his work there. Uh, that was a rough idea about knowing that a friend of mine, or co-worker of mine I should say, co-worker slash friend, uh, was looking to have a, a tattoo done. And so I did the sketch for her. I don't think she actually ended up using this. I think she went a different direction, but um, supposed to be Denali with fireweed and uh, some stars over her head. Yeah. Oh my gosh, rocks and trees and cabins. Uh, I think I took a big break there, because this looks really rough. Like, it looks like I hadn't drawn something in a while. I was kind of in a rush and a hurry. But yeah, again, trying to put things in the background to put, make layers and depth. What really would have made this better is if I had cut this down to like 50%, so it wasn't as strong as like this stuff up here. But this stuff's too bold and too strong. to It kind of loses its depth. 
That one's a bit better. Perspective's a little stronger. Uh, again, floating blocks and kind of the Lego modular Tetris thing. And playing with, again, see I can get the background to fuzz out, but then separating this tree layer, this stone, and this cabin, they all kind of look like they're flat on the same plane to me. So how do you get them to not look like that? Just more filler things. Uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark was being released around this time release. I think I saw an ad for it. Yeah, it's June, so I think I saw an ad for it. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that show. Or the book series, I guess. You know, it's a, you know, it's a show or a movie or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of the looming mortis there. I don't know what that is. Bendy tree. Single subject. Took a lot of time on it. Not a lot of time, but enough time. Uh, I was playing with doing on this one like different a series of like different forms of pollution. So you got like cigarette butts, campfires, things like that. Or things that started fires too. So just trying out different ideas. So I did that. That's actually my right hand. I used a took a picture of it. I wasn't holding a match. I was just holding it. And um, if you know how matches burn, that's not how matches burn down. So the flame should actually be like close to the fingers. And this all should just be uh, blackened. Oops. <laughs> this is something really different. Uh, this is Sir Arthur Basilton. He is the goodest boy in the revolution. And, and I started playing with um, the idea of like a mouse, him making a character and doing a little mouse, and she has little adventures that she goes on. So I think I uh, ended up naming her Rosie. Yeah. And then, oh yeah. So you can kind of see I started doing other things here in this book. So typically I would have like a smaller uh, little sketchbook and I would do like other non-tree things in. But uh, in this case, I think I used that book up, so put started putting dinosaurs and other stuff in here. Let me turn this around here real quick. So yeah, still playing with the idea of the mouse, uh, going on little adventures and doing things. There she is. Catching a ride on a dandelion puff. Oh yeah, here's where she meets her little friend, Ladybug. A grass stalk. So trying to, on this one, it's July it looks like, um, play with the face and different angles and stuff like that. And getting a consistent uh, face is really important. Did some more work there. There's some ladybug practice too. So still not quite working out there. Some angles work okay, but some angles don't. Yeah, back to more tree things. I think I just watched the Bob Ross episode, so I kind of got reinvigorated there. I don't know what that is. Yeah, more trees and cabins and stuff. It's, it's fine. It's just whatever. This was an idea I was playing with at a... Uh, one of our drink and draws here in Vancouver. Kind of a delicate butterfly in the crushed can kind of a thing. And then I think, yeah, blah, 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 more trees and stuff. Yeah, and then this one here is where I redid it. I like how that turned out a lot better. So. Yeah, that one's better. Mice doing things that are cute with other animals. You notice there's no reins on the bird. So they're in a collaboration there. Uh, here I was playing with um, markers, uh, adding color to stuff. I've always wanted to add color to things because I think it makes uh, it more interesting, but I can never get the color to, to 
go. It doesn't quite flow for me. Maybe I just don't have the patience for it. Yeah. Something I started and then stopped. More of the same there. Getting close to the end. There's a little mouse again with her ladybug friend. Underneath a little bleat mushroom. Terror bird. I think I did this pretty quick. It's maybe like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or something like that. A kitty sketch. So my daughter asked me to draw a kitty for her, so I did. And I kept it all this kind of vermilion pencil, which I really like. I like the feel of it. I like the look of it. Um, I think it has a nice softness about it, a uh, nice warmness. And you get that frame for her because she wants it in her room. Uh, sad elephant. Can't imagine why he's sad. I'm getting close to the end here to move the book a little bit. So then I started looking at other creatures I could draw. Um, obviously a crab. I think the proportions are okay. It's just, again, getting those markers to work just right for me is challenging task. I'm not sure what I need to do about it. Um, just more practice and more research and study. And then, yeah, this guy uh, kind of did the pencil sketch first and then did ink over on a light board later on. So this is just the sketch for the, the giant forest crab. And is that it? I think that's it. Yep. That's the last page. So, um, if you watch this, cable stuck. If you watch this, thanks so much for watching it. Um, that's the end of the sketchbook walkthrough. Um, we'll go on to the next one and start filling them up. So, thanks a lot. Bye. It's not working. There it goes.